Hello, this is Mark Gunkifer, and welcome to our Fiber Optic Sensing Association webinar. Uh, we have a real interesting application being presented by Smart Pike Technologies, which is one of our newer members. It talks about the transition of uh, from smart pipelines to smart cities. Uh, we have a tag team of presenters, uh, Robin McIntosh, Christopher Littlestar, and Stuart Lange. Um, we'll looking forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we're going to give you a uh, brief introduction to uh, Smart Cities. And uh, so large is going to I'm going to go ahead and do that. So if you, if, in case you want to uh, look us up on LinkedIn, there we are. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to pass it over to you, Stuart, and, uh, and uh, here we go. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so this, just to give a setting here, uh, what is a smart city? Uh, I recently attended a uh, really good uh, exhibition in Barcelona, uh, which was uh, Smart City Expo 2018, uh, which gave some uh, really good uh, insight into this. Uh, perhaps we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, I also uh, referred to Wiki for uh, a definition, uh, which I think is worth reading. Uh, a smart city is an urban area that uses different types of electronic data collection sensors to supply information which is used to manage assets and resources efficiently. So a smart city is therefore uh, better prepared to respond to the challenges uh, than one with a simple transactional relationship with clients. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we use a number of different uh, types of sensors. Uh, so, for example, at the exhibition, I saw a lot of uh, processes that use cameras to monitor for the activities of people or traffic flows, and also things like um, radar, infrared sensors, uh, and other sensors that just tune into communications uh, in a city and use those to inform provide knowledge and make decisions. And if we look at the different aspects of a smart city, which is that diagram on the right, you see that there's obviously things like smart transportation, which perhaps is very obvious, uh, smart infrastructures, surveillance, uh, the electricity and water distribution, buildings, healthcare and services. And actually what we see is that distributed acoustic sensing or distributed fiber sensors can participate in at least six of those seven applications. Uh, just coming back therefore to the definition, uh, it said we use electronic data. Well, actually I think we need to update Wiki because it's also going to now be fiber optic uh, sensors that are gonna to contribute to the smart city environment. So back to SmartPipe to talk to us about their technology before you hear from me again. Thank you, Stuart. We'll, we'll come back to you in a second to talk more about the, the monitoring aspect of, of the system. But I just want to talk a little bit about SmartPipe and what, what we're bringing to smart cities. SmartPipe, we're, we've developed a technology for using existing infrastructure to make pipelines safer and also to make cities safer. We're upgrading the pipeline system and this is for oil, gas, water, fuel, all types of pipelines. But we're providing a means to bring back and utilize previously retired pipelines. The, the fiber optic systems are embedded into the smart pipe system. And Stuart's gonna talk more in a second about just exactly how that works and, and, and what it's gonna be used for. But, it's it's going to be used for communication and asset control uh, on the pipeline. The, the smart pipe system is a, is a fully structural pipeline system. We're, we're not de depending on the existing infrastructure, uh, pipeline infrastructure. You know, we've our technology, which I'm going to talk about the, the process in a second, but our technology 
uh, is using the existing infrastructure both in the cities and in urban situations as well but we're we have the ability to to replace and utilize the existing infrastructure in the cities with minimal uh, disruption bringing them back to full service or upgrading them with minimal dis disruption which enhances public safety and, and comfort of, of the citizens of a city. One of the key things about the smart pipe is it's non-metallic, it's, it's non-corroding. So that's a big, a big benefit uh, to, to those people who are uh, maintaining the, the, the structure. So if you, if you look at this, this, the schematic that's on your screen, this depicts a typical urbine, urban pipeline system where you know they go under schools, they go through the cities. Uh, through parks and um, businesses and they're in, in the right-of-way in the pipeline right-of-way there are multiple utilities there liquid hydro hydrocarbon utilities natural gas uh, water telecom etc etc but this is a very high consequence uh, location and very difficult to to work on these these pipelines and and where the fiber optic companies are, are struggling is, is with deployment of, of the fiber cables. So really you're getting a two for one uh, with the smart pipe system. We're, we're upgrading and utilizing the existing infrastructure, but we're also deploying the, the fiber optic systems. Uh, typically the, the right of ways would have to be, you know, we'd have to shut down streets. You know, you'd have to, you know, causing chaos to traffic restricting access to businesses, schools, residences, et cetera, et cetera. So here comes the 21st century. We're deploying the fiber optics in, in areas that is typically very challenging and costly. And Stuart's going to go into this in a little bit more detail. Simply put, smart pipe requires an entry point and an exit point. Uh, we're not shutting down the streets or disrupting the traffic, et cetera. Uh, we're setting up a, a portable factory in the city, close to uh, the pipeline sections that we're replacing. Uh, we can set up in parking lots, you know, side avenues, etc. But we'll have a factory on one side of the pipeline, one end of the pipeline, and then it could be a few thousand feet or it could be a few kilometers away. We're going to have a winch, and we're going to be pulling our system through through the pipeline. Uh, we're going to explain how we do that in a second. Uh, I just want to mention that we have the ability to fold our pipeline system. So it's a very robust, high pressure pipeline system that we're manufacturing and installing, but it can also be folded and pulled into the existing pipeline. The reason we fold it is to try and maximize the flow capacity of the pipeline, but to also ease the pooling process. So we're, we're, we're just making it easier to get the pipeline in. It's a very fast, it's a very efficient, non-disruptive technique that we've developed, uh, both for upgrading the infrastructure, but for also deployment of the, the fiber optic system. So, so this is just a, a quick overview of what the, the, the pipeline system looks like. Um, as I mentioned before, it is manufactured in a portable factory. I'm gonna show you a video of that in a second. Uh, but the fiber is embedded in the pipeline system. It's protected. So there are multiple cables and fibers in the, in the pipeline. They are protected and we can deploy various types of cable, various types of fiber. They're, these are job specific and you know, they can be used for the monitoring, uh, you know, control for communication, both for primary communication and also for backup secondary communication which is key to the security of, of the cities. I mentioned already, but the, the smart pipe system is fully structural and uh, designed you know, to specific applications with respect to pressures, diameters, uh, temperatures, lengths. And uh, the, the mobile pa uh, portable factory we, we mobilized the job site can manufacture multiple uh, types of pipe, uh, sizes of pipes and diameters, pressures, etc. And the strength of the smart pipe system comes from the high strength fibers we wrap around it. These are liquid crystal polymers. 
and they've got a strong proven history for use in hydrocarbon, water use, etc. The patented design of the smart pipe system allows for very long pool lengths. Um, this is the best in the industry. We can pool miles, kilometers, not just a few thousand feet. And, and one of the key reasons for doing that is not just for disruption to the right of way and avoiding that, but we have no connectors between very long sections. So typically connection points can cause angst for integrity management programs, along with all the safety concerns uh, for protecting the public, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, our system is unique in that we have very few of these couplings. We have one typically at each, each end of the system, which are several kilometers apart. So it's a very robust state-of-the-art design, uh, which is much superior to steel, and especially since it doesn't it doesn't corrode. Just to give you, a, you know, uh, an idea of where we are right now with the technology. I mean, it's 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 proven technology. Um, the fiber optics are integrated as part of the pipeline system. Run, right now, we can manufacture uh, smart pipe systems to to uh, upgrade, replace, rehabilitate um, up to 16-inch diameter pipelines, um, which in the cities is is you know a good size. Uh, we do have plans to to, to work on a 24-inch very soon, um, but that's that's down the road. Today we're focused on up to 16-inch. It's a very high-pressure system. Um, and you know we've mentioned the fact that we can replace long long lengths. The most captivating feature is the ability to to pull the long lengths and and have the fiber cables embedded in the pipeline system. This is this is best in class, and it provides a smart network for energy transportation and city monitoring, and communication control, and provides the data required to be proactive in emergency response and for future city planning. So here's here's a, a picture of the factory. Uh, I'm about to show you a video of how this, this looks inside, but just I just want to just kind of give you an overview. This is a 21st century approach to pipeline replacement in cities and rural locations. It's it's unique, patented, game changing. Um, the fiber is added to the, the smart pipe system during the manufacturing process. This avoids the, the need to transport, you know, short reels of largest diameter pipe from a manufacturing plant across the country or across the world. Right. Um, this is very, that's very difficult to do and impossible actually in some cases. It's very costly. Um, so this avoids the need for unnecessarily safe couplings and, and integrity management issues. Uh, the, the manufacturing process, it's very fast, it's very efficient, uh, both the simultaneous manufacturing and installation. Uh, typically, we can, we can manufacture up to like a mile a day or 1.6 kilometers a day. Um, you know, we're, we're operating three to four feet a minute. Uh, there's dramatically less labor required in the, in the installation process and manufacturing process. Uh, Typically, we'll have a crew of 12 to 15 people working on the on the smart pipe system. Uh, more than half of those people are engaged in quality control activities, you know, monitoring, um, collecting data, and just making sure that the the factory is and the design is as as planned. The the factory is very environmentally compatible. With it's got a low decibel reading, um, it's got a low emission footprint. So, you know, it's, it's friendly um, as far as it's not going to, to annoy uh, the citizens or uh, cause any concerns with uh, environmental issues. Um, as I mentioned before, the last step of the, of the manufacturing process is to take the pipe and sea form it if required, and then pull it into an existing pipeline. So, that's that's just a, the factory in a nutshell. I mean, this gives you an idea of another footprint. I mean, they can be manipulated to fit in cities, to fit in a uh, a parking lot, a side avenue, uh, or somewhere convenient. It doesn't it doesn't have to be right on the pipeline, but it can be close to the pipeline. So I'm going to show you a 
a video right now of what the actual mobile factory looks like. So uh, this is this is inside that tent that you were looking at, as you're about to see. Uh, just it's just starting, so just bear with me. So so this is inside that that tent that you looked at. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the tent is about uh, 420 feet long typically. But you'll notice that the the crew working inside the factory are not. Um, altering the pipe in a way they're just taking recording data and um, collecting data for quality control purposes. Uh, this is the actual speed that the factory would be operating. Uh, so it's not slowed down or sped up in any way. You can see in that television screen there, 2.8 feet a minute. So it's, maybe it's a little bit slower than, than normal, but that's the, the, the actual speed. You can see um, you know, the fibers have been added there and the uh, their outer one of the outer wraps. This is the C forming process, taking the pipe and, and folding it into a C shape. That doesn't have to be done every time, um, but if we're trying to maximize flow capacity and make it easier to pull inside a pipeline, this is what we'll do. I do want to stress one thing, that smart pipe does not need to be pulled inside an existing pipeline, that we can uh, just lay the pipe in, in a ditch. Which, which is typical as well. So uh, that's, um, so that's, that's the, the, what the factory looks like from the inside. So I pulled through an existing pipeline. What this picture shows is a piece of smart pipe that has been pulled through a pipeline. It's sticking out a pipeline and they, these can be miles apart. Uh, you'll notice this, this is C-form pipe, so it's actually folded with, and the, the, the tape's holding it in the C-shape with protective wrap around it. But you'll notice on the, on the picture that there's a black cable. That's the fiber optics, which we do have live uh, during uh, the manufacturing and installation process. That's monitoring the health of the fibers as we're pulling it in. It's also, uh, we can use it for monitoring the re-rounding, which I'm going to show you in this video. And it's monitoring the health of the integrity of the pipeline system. So, so, what, you're, oh, sorry. so what you're seeing here is a C-form pipe. Uh, we've put connectors on both ends. We're, we've a, attached a compressor to the bottom. And we're now going to start the re-rounding process and this is very quick so once we've applied about uh, 50 60 psi it's about uh, four bar of uh, pressure to the pipeline it starts to open up so there's the opening of the smart pipe system so that propagates all the way through the pipeline. I'll, I'll, I'll just show that one more time, just, just so you can see it. Um, and takes the pipe from the C shape back to uh, the, the round shape. And uh, the whole time we do have the, the fiber optics line during that process. So that, that was an overview of the smart pipe system and, and how we manufacture the pipe and what we're bringing to the smart cities. I'm now going to hand back to Stuart, who's going to talk a little bit more about the actual monitoring system and how that pertains to, to the smart cities. Okay, thank you, Robin. I think that's a couple of really good videos there, especially that second one. I think that uh, as the, the pipes expanded again and we see all the, the tapes that were holding it in the C shape uh, bursting as you pump up the pipe and it expands, obviously that's something that is very clearly seen uh, with the DAS acoustic sensing uh, technology with that fiber in place. So 
As we talk then about uh, fiber optic sensing, and it's, so of course it's great that uh, Smart Pipe have put this fiber uh, on the side of the pipe, uh, and it's and it's you know built into the body of that pipeline. You know we'll look at what we can use that for now through the life of the pipeline. So we go to the next slide, please. First of all, you know, a little bit of background uh, on on this technology. Uh, and you know, Fotec has presented on, on these webinars before, so I'm not going to go into so much detail on certain aspects of it. But as we're talking about pipelines in a in a smart city, you know, just a you know, little bit about the background here. Uh, we're now monitoring thousands of kilometers of pipeline assets, 24 hours a, a day, seven days a week, and uh, automatically alarming when there are events of concern around the pipeline. We've accumulated over 5 million hours of in-field operation, and that's so we've installations through more than 20 countries. But it's actually not all about the sensor. Uh, it's also about the software, and I think we're going to see that in some of the next few slides. So we've invested over 200 man years of software development time to create a system that handles the big data that DAS generates and applies artificial intelligence technology uh, to build a platform uh, for pipeline monitoring and indeed the smart city uh, sensing environment. So next slide, please. So specific to pipeline monitoring, there's a number of uh, things we'd like to identify that could be a concern for the pipeline. Obviously, there's a continual threat uh, in some locations anyway of hot tapping. Uh, so that is somebody trying to uh, connect into the pipeline, uh, illegally of course, and take product from it whilst it is flowing, which obviously is has a financial implication, but is also extremely dangerous. We can uh, monitor and detect that. There's excavation damage which of course can be particularly prevalent within a city environment as uh, you know, there's other utility companies there that will be uh, have their pneumatic drills out or a JCB uh, excavating trenches or holes for uh, the things that they want to put in the ground. Sometimes those pipes are hit by accident. There is uh, unplanned maintenance that you know, perhaps hasn't been notified to the pipeline operator and so it's good to have a system that can detect that. And then, of course, there's leak detection and uh, the detection of pigs, pigs being pipe inspection gadgets that are pumped through a pipeline either to inspect it or to clean it. Next slide, please. So let's look at some of the challenges that you know the operators face. First of all, leak detection you know there was uh, a, a you know there's numerous cases uh, of leaks in pipelines uh, most of them so far have been out in uh, you know more wild locations which of course means that they can go unnoticed for quite long periods of time and in in the particular case here um, it's believed that a pipeline was struck by lightning and it leaked uh, around 20,000 barrels of product into a field over the course of a few days before the farmer working the field reported this uh, this leak. Initially, the cost was estimated at $4 million, but it subsequently has turned out to be uh, more like $100 million. And it was a four-year cleanup, as basically the field had to be excavated, the soil cleaned up and, and replaced. And this was in quite a remote location, but imagine you know leaks that could occur in a city environment. You'd you'd hope they tend to be identified more quickly, but not necessarily. There could be a lot of seepage into the ground around the pipeline, uh, and of course the cost of remediation and the difficulty of that could be a lot more severe. Next slide, please. So DAS technology is really becoming recognized as a good means of detecting and locating with good accuracy the location of a leak from a pipeline. This example here 
Uh, I don't expect you to necessarily understand the data you see on, on the screen, other than you can see it's quite noisy uh, in, in nature. And that's because we're monitoring a pipeline that is in a fairly urban environment uh, by an airport. So there's a lot of activity from vehicles on the road near the pipeline. There's even the influence of aeroplanes taking off and landing. Uh, there are quiet bits where the fiber cable goes underneath a bridge. And, um, and then there is, uh, in this case, uh, as we're going to see on the next slide, actually uh, some, some leaks that are being simulated uh, on, on this pipeline. So to prove this out to the client, uh, we actually undertook uh, 45 leak uh, tests, and that was spread across nine uh, random test locations along a length of 34 kilometers. And we're talking about leaks here that were as small as one millimeter diameter. So next slide, please. So on the right-hand side, you can see a picture of a tube that is pressed into the ground. And this is where we're injecting water to simulate a leaking oil from the pipeline. Obviously, we can't leak oil for real into this ground. No one would be happy with that. But the water gives us a similar signature. And so in the center of the screen there, you can see the bright yellow signature, which is the result of using the software and the algorithms to screen out all those sounds that come from the vehicles and, and the airplanes and other things going along in that urban environment and allow us to pick out the specific acoustic signature of a leak. And so using these techniques, we had 100% true positive detection on those 45 tests and crucially zero false alarms. Uh, and that's a key point because anyone can raise an alarm, but what kills you is when you're raising false alarms and sending people to site too regularly and unnecessarily. All right, so next slide, please. All right, so the system that we are going to deploy here it's a modular system. It incorporates DAS sensors into modules, which will be either a monitoring and sensing module, a sensing module by itself, or a monitoring module. And so a sensing module contains a DAS sensor and therefore is connected to the fiber that runs along the pipeline and is going to detect the things we're looking for. And then the monitoring module is where we create alarms and pass that information to the client so that they can take action. And it's modular in nature so that as a pipeline network is expanded, perhaps with new sections of pipeline uh, or new fiber installations, we're able to grow with that uh, each time uh, and still monitor in one system on, on one map. Next slide, please. So this is the way in which we take uh, the events that have been detected by a DAS sensor and then accumulate the events, apply logic over, as, as in understanding what's happening over a period of time. So perhaps we are detecting uh, somebody digging for a few seconds and it carries on for a few minutes. And over time, we raise that to, from a green level alert to an amber warning to a red level alarm. And at each stage of that process, we'll be providing information about where the uh, events and the alarm are occurring, the times over which they've occurred, and then there'll be different actions that take place as these things are reported to the client. Next slide, please. So let's look at another application then. This is, is hot tapping. Uh, on a particular uh, pipeline in India, and again, this is quite a, yeah, a reasonably urban environment in the sense that there's a, an awful lot going on, uh, lots of people moving around and vehicles, and et cetera. Uh, the 72 kilometer long stretch of pipeline suffered 26 hot tapping attempts in the space of six months as detected by our DAS sensor. And in each case, uh, as we detected the digging and raised the alarm and sent out a a security team to the location that we gave, they would arrive and find a hole was being dug in the ground. Uh, sometimes they, they might catch people, obviously other times the people would be seen 
running off into the woods with their torches. Uh, but then at least we prevent that uh, them having the time to get to the pipe and to steal from it and install their tap. Uh, the hole could be filled back in and made good, and uh, and a lot of uh, money and potential safety concerns uh, are are saved. All right, next slide, please. So now we we're going to look at uh, accidental damage, and I think this is particularly relevant in the urban environment where we often find that utilities, pipelines, power cables, and uh, communication cables will crisscross in the city. Uh, often they run uh, very, quite close to each other on underneath roads, or sometimes they will cross each other. But actually, because some of the infrastructure is very old, the maps are very poor. And uh, certainly I can say for the UK here, uh, the um, coordination between utilities is poor and hence there are accidents where one contractor or utility uh, strikes the asset of another utility um, by, by accident and indeed 12 and a half percent of the accidents to pipelines in the US from 94 to 2013 were caused by excavation damage so this is something that's actually quite straightforward to address with the DAS technology. So on the next slide, please. Uh, what we've got here is an example from South America, where in actual fact, uh, as we were monitoring, we detected excavation at two locations. And the good thing is with DAS that we are monitoring the whole pipeline and we're able to detect multiple events at once at different locations along the pipeline. So the fact we saw two excavation events uh, around you know, 150 or 200 meters apart in this case meant that the team knew they had to go to two locations to check what was going on. Uh, next slide, please. So here we can see uh, on a map uh, that the alarms have been raised at two locations. A little bit small to see on a screen, but I've put the two red circles around the icons that were placed on the map and obviously giving you a very clear location on a Google image uh, to say, you know, these are the places and the coordinates to which the team needs to go and check out what's, what's occurring. Uh, and on the next slide, please, uh, we can just see a photo taken from one of the locations where in actual fact, uh, this was intentional that the hole was being dug. It, it was uh, maintenance works but actually the maintenance team had neglected to inform the pipeline operator that this was something they were doing today. And so um, although no harm was done, it was good for the operator to have this visibility and to know that on future occasions, um, you know, that they're gonna get alarms uh, and warnings of uh, such activity. All right, the next slide, please. So last, um, so a few little topics here. The um, DAS technology, which is going to be uh, deployed on, on these pipelines, obviously is there to protect the pipeline itself, but also can have secondary uses. And so this little wheel here is just showing you some of the applications of DAS technology. Uh, we're seeing um, you know, that we can protect uh, power cables. Uh, it can be used to monitor uh, road and rail uh, movements uh, and there are some you know general applications through smart cities and so depending upon the location of the pipeline uh, you know, particularly if it runs parallel to a road say uh, then it may be possible to use that DAS data uh, for other purposes so if we just go to the next slide just for one last example this is an example of uh, data uh, or in this instance, it was in a tunnel, uh, but showing the flow of traffic uh, along a stretch of road. And what you can see there are the uh, signatures of individual vehicles as diagonal lines across that image. And the vertical lines are the, uh, the, the, the ventilation fans in the tunnel that are just driving the air uh, through it. But just to highlight, a uh, few features can be nicely seen. Uh, there's a truck that is driving along. So can you stay on that uh, 
on that steam side that's it thank you there's a truck that is driving along and it is and its speed is represented by the angle of that line and the truck of course is going a bit slower than the cars which are ahead of it uh, and so you can there's a gap there uh, to the right of where I've marked the truck and that gap has been growing over time time being on the vertical axis and distance on the horizontal and then to the left and above the signature of the truck you can see a number of other cars that are closing up behind it and forming a bit of a queue and so generally you can see the acceleration and deceleration of the cars see how close together they're traveling to each other but also you can imagine that were there to be an accident or a blockage in the tunnel then the flow of the traffic through that tunnel would would change and there'd be quite clear signatures to be seen uh, as the vehicles stop and build a queue uh, behind the blockage so interesting applications uh, for, for what else we could do with the uh, DAS data coming from the fiber that were attached to the pipeline uh, were it in the right place um, for, for monitoring traffic on a road. So the last slide from me to conclude, I have the next one please, is just to summarize you know, what do we see as the potential with smart pipelines? Well it's about detecting uh, the uh, events uh, that we're interested in, so threats to the pipeline uh, or other things such as traffic movement that uh, we can distinguish from the background noise uh, that we're not particularly uh, interested in. And then to give clarity and high confidence in the alerts and alarms that we provide and to be monitoring over long distances and continually monitoring over the entire pipeline length. And of course, because we've got a modular system, uh, you know, whereas perhaps we might monitor uh, you know, 40 or 50 kilometers of fiber in one direction, we can also, with a two-channel system, look the same distance the other way. And then with the modular system, we can add uh, more modules to cover hundreds or you know, or more uh, kilometers of pipeline as a whole. So then uh, the benefits then for the client is that they're able to respond quickly to any threats to the pipeline or to shut it down uh, should a leak happen to be detected and therefore to reserve pollution, uh, sorry, reduce pollution and to preserve their reputation and ultimately to stay safe uh, and um, not uh, uh, waste money um, having to deal with uh, accidents or uh, unnecessary maintenance on their pipeline. So thank you. Uh, with that, I'll hand back to Robin for SmartPipe. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, this is uh, Chris Lillisar. Um Those were some great examples of uh, what Potex fiber optic monitoring systems are capable of. And uh, for us, uh, you know, what some of the great technologies that we have available to embed on board our composite pipeline replacement system and deliver to these smart cities as they grow and progress. So uh, as we're coming to a close here today, I just want to give some short summaries of, of some of what makes smart pipe and uh, really why things like this photo here aren't always necessary when there are other options to use something like a trenchless solution like ours. So full excavation of a pipeline, you know, as, as Stuart and Robin have both mentioned, really no matter what type of product it's transferring could potentially be avoided. Along with all of uh, the accessibility challenges that come along with tearing up an urban thoroughfare like this. Uh, business to suffer, uh, depending on scale and timeline of the project, small companies, uh, locally owned businesses, the mom and pop shops really, really feel it. Uh, strongly along with all the other residents in the area uh, on their daily commutes. Some of them don't make it out of these scenarios. Um, additionally, as mentioned before, potential damage to uh, adjacent underground assets that may not have been exactly where predicted prior to the dig. Third party damage in our industry is uh, one of the major causes of, of fluid release. 
And it's also one of the main benefits that we have having that onboard fiber optic solution, uh, which provides us that early indicator of impending potential damage. So while not completely avoid, avoidable, uh, the use of trenchless technologies for, uh, for these types of replacements should always be considered. Um, and, and really education uh, is what's important around what these solutions are like ours and what should be available uh, to all the involved parties making those decisions is key. Um, our city, Houston, is pretty familiar with these types of projects. We're, we're under constant uh, development here. And uh, personally, this is something that I've been feeling the past couple of months, so I'm very familiar with it. My neighborhood's torn up, heavy machinery parked up and down the streets uh, for the past month and a half. And uh, I, I, I question is whether these, these were the best available practices uh, and if they're using the, the the, the newest and greatest that's available to replace uh, the water lines that they're, they're currently replacing in our community. Uh, go ahead. Now, uh, let's talk about what we do in comparison to this full excavation. Now, this scenario here pictured is what it would look like if a smart pipe was being pulled through uh, to replace a pipeline in, in, on a street like this. Um, with the with full economic impacts uh, in consideration, with the both short and long term, the uh, trenchless replacement solutions end up being a, a fraction of the cost of a traditional dig and replace method. We we don't have to go in and, and replace these streets. Um, it's faster. It's it's safer, uh, more efficient, and we've shown in studies that our overall carbon footprint is less than. 10% of what a traditional pipeline replacement would be. And we do that with less than 2% of excavation area. So we can deliver our, our product into any existing old pipeline infrastructure. Uh, if we can pull our pipe in, it doesn't really matter what the line was, was uh, transmitting prior. Uh, we have the ability to move all traditional fuels, uh, gas and diesel, the pump stations, as well as clean burning natural gas to electric power plants, businesses, and homes in the area. Um, <clears throat> so one thing we haven't really talked about is uh, renewables. Uh, clean tech like hydrogen fuel cells, like this vehicle pictured, uh, which we believe in the near future will likely be a large part of smart city infrastructures as we see more and more of these autonomous vehicles uh, come into the marketplace with uh, large companies like Uber, Amazon, and even Apple recently announced they're moving into the space. So we expect to see much more need for, uh, for hydrogen transfer. We've, we've undergone successful product testing through DOE with the uh, Savannah River Laboratory, as well as NREL, the National Renewable Energy Lab for uh, hydrogen transfer. And we've been included in the ASME B3112 standard for hydrogen pipelines, which uh, we think is pretty exciting. Um, so again, or smart pipe has the, uh, the ability to deliver hydrogen safely to those hydrogen fuel cell fill-up stations. And if you live on the West Coast, you've seen some of these pop up as, uh, as hydrogen cell vehicles become more widely produced and uh, consumer used. And I, I believe we'll continue to see more of these in, in, in the highly urban areas around the country. Um, typically starts on the coast and moves in. But um, again, in conclusion, uh, all of these things are possible uh, when we bring these smart technology solutions together, like Fotec and SmartPipe, uh, to make these installations and operations in smart cities non-intrusive and uh, most importantly, safer for those who live and work there. So we're gonna end here and take some questions. Mark, I believe I'm passing it back to you. You are, and, and thank you very much for a very informative uh, presentation. 
Uh, if you'd like to ask questions, the way to do it is to type in, there's a box on the right side and question, um, although I have frankly a few to start. <clears throat> you did an interesting comparison, certainly it's an interesting installation technology. Uh, can you give a, examples of where there are sort of current applications or current locations where smart, smart pipe is being used for installation? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, smart pipe, we've deployed smart pipe in the United States and some pilot projects in, in various states in, in California, Texas, Illinois, uh, where uh, it's been used for natural gas transportation. That's high pressure natural gas. Uh, under river crossings and also in a transmission line feeding a distribution system uh, in, near here in Houston. It's also been used for crude oil transportation under in a, in a very industrial location and it's been an industrial slash urban location in the west coast in California. Uh, this is actually so, uh, two lines installed there. One's a crude oil system, and one's a, a produced water system. And those, uh, all those projects we as mentioned, have been in the ground operating safely for in excess of five years. And there have been numerous tests carried out on the pipe throughout that time, uh, all under scrutiny of federal and state regulators and third-party engineering firms. So we're at the point now where smart pipe is, you know, it's fit for purpose, the proven technology, and we're working towards, you know, the more, the more high consequence pipelines. Okay, that's very helpful. Uh, now, if, if smart pipe is used to just use a part of a very long pipeline so say 20 miles in an urban area is there anything that can be done to retrofit the remaining uh, uh, part of the pipeline say the, the the balance of the say 80 miles if you're using a hundred mile example well mark i'm going to pass that one over to Stuart, but i just just want to just reiterate that smart pipe can be used to replace the complete pipeline. So we're designed to, to replace pipelines that go from the cities right across the country, uh, transmission pipelines. But Stuart, do you want to address that? Yes, sure. So so in the case where perhaps part of the pipeline were replaced, uh, obviously if the pipeline has got a uh, fiber optic cable laid in a suitable position parallel to it, then we could splice into that um, yeah, so, so effectively the, the smart pipe fibre could be spliced into the cable that lays alongside the pipeline and then we could monitor it as one. And But also we have to recognise that uh, a lot of pipelines, particularly ones that perhaps smart pipe are replacing, are going to be uh, of a certain age and therefore they might not have had a fibre cable installed at the time of construction. But what's uh, interesting there is that there are actually a number of you know, new technologies emerging now to potentially lay a fibre cable parallel to a pre-existing pipeline. So obviously it needs to be able to uh, sort of monitor the position of the pipeline as it travels along it, uh, look out for other um, pipelines or cables that might cross the path, but to then uh, lay the new fibre cable in place. And I'd say that those technologies have you know, starting to become available and the, um, you know, the sort of economies around that, the pricing around that is becoming more reasonable, perhaps affordable, uh, and therefore yeah, it could be uh, a viable solution. Okay. Uh, what about uh, inline uh, inspection? So if, if corrosion is not an issue, but what about cracking and other forms of degrada degradation and material loss? Yeah, that, that's a good question, Mark. The, the current regulations and technologies that are out there are, are really designed for metallic pipe. So with the, the up and coming uh, evolution to non-metallic pipe, there are technologies that are being developed for carrying out inline inspection of, of this type of pipe. 
the, the regulations don't cover this, but the technologies are being developed. There are ways that uh, the pipe can be installed. The, the, the current regulations currently allow for three inspection techniques. That's uh, the smart inline inspection tools, the smart tools, as you were referring to, also hydro testing and direct assessment. So the current inline inspection tools don't currently address the, the smart pipes. But the magic testing and the direct assessment pieces are, can be used all day, and they have been uh, adopted by by the regulators as a suitable inspection technique for the smart pipe system. But you know things are evolving daily, and, and the techniques are coming to to, uh, to to have the ability to 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 inspect the pipe. Of course, you, you have to remember that. We've talked about smart pipe having uh, fiber optic cables installed in them for monitoring. So we can monitor, you know, somebody mentioned earlier, that, that, I think it was Stuart mentioned earlier, that third party intrusion uh, is one of the biggest causes of, of a, a pipeline damage. And we can we can detect that before we even get near to the pipeline. You can, with the technologies available that, that Stuart was talking about, um, monitors pipelines by people getting close to the pipeline. Um, now, the, the, the leak detection in the smart pipe system is also, I mean, it's, it's revolutionary, and we're detecting leaks to, you know, at least to within a meter along the pipeline, and that's real time. Um, but but with with smart pipe, I mean your your failure mode is um, is with steel pipelines you have corrosion. With smart pipe, the, the failure mode is actually um, the, the fibers that are wrapped around the pipe, and it's more time dependent. So these these systems are designed for 50 years plus, but they're that's just what we designed it to for API. They're going to last. You know, 200 years, you know. But obviously, we have to send them to a specification. So, they're, they're time dependent materials. So, the traditional issues that you have with um, steel pipe don't have to to the small pipe system. So, what is the or has been the longest installation that you've been involved with so far? So, we've so, so we've installed pipe. We've had uh, numerous projects. We've installed pipe uh, under river um, that was half a mile. There was a few two pipes there. Actually, there's four pipes. We've replaced two of them, and that's they were half a mile each. And that's the longest to date. We've got projects coming up uh, in the in 2019, which are going to be much longer than that. And that's really the market that smart pipes designed for. Okay, and would it be possible to include a micro conduit in addition to the fiber cable within the pipeline structure to enable or, or uh, replaceable, upgradable fiber cable? Absolutely. In fact, that's um, you know that's part of the design of the smart pipe, and you know we we mentioned earlier that smart pipe has several fiber cables installed in it, um, and each. But there's no specific design, but we're now uh, looking at just installing a conduit. Because quite often, the operators don't see the value in the fiber optics, but there is huge value in the fiber optics, which they're beginning to realize now. And yes, um, it is possible to include um, the conduit in the system so that fibers can be blown in uh, at a later date and, and even removed and replaced if required. And so we're working right now with uh, with companies here in the U.S. in order to be able to do that. Um, I had a kind of a time frame question. How long does it take to uh, set up the factory, and how long do you have to move move it during uh, construction? So, so the factory is 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 a portable factory. It's it's very quick. So. We mobilize it to site. It takes two, maybe three, the most days to set it up. We calibrate it, uh, manufacture test pipe, and then we're into production. 
and and you know if we if we're replacing a long pipeline where we have to move the factory or we can have multiple factories on the pipeline you know if it's a very long pipeline but if it was just one factory then you know it takes two or three days to, to set it up and then if we have to uh, take it down and reset it up we can do that in you know three four days and um, that's for start to finish. So it's very, very quick process compared with traditional, you know, replacing of pipelines, you know, digging up the right of way and having all your welding crews, etc. Very fast process. Um, I think you kind of covered this in the lifespan question, but what is the material uh, composing smart pipe? You may want to go back and elaborate on that a little bit. You know, you discussed it. And, uh, you touched over a little bit on that. Yeah, I didn't get into the details, but um, so so what we have is a core pipe um, of high density. Typically, right now it's it's PE forty seven width, um, which is high density polyethylene. That's really there. It's not a structural uh, part of the smart pipe. It's a ladder that's used to hold all the rest of the materials. So the high density polyethylene that's, that's used as a core in smart pipe is very thin walled. Um, it's a commodity item we can buy anywhere in the world. And, and when we looked at the factory, the first half of that length of the factory is really just for the fusion of this, uh, the polyethylene that is delivered to the job site. And then all the quality control that goes into that. So once we've, we've got the core pipe, we are wrapping high strength uh, fibers uh, around the pipe Typically, these fibers are uh, liquid crystal polymers, and uh, they're very, very high strength uh, fibers. They're they're made in a, in a fashion that's that's um, unique to to us, and if they're wrapped onto the pipe in in layers, uh, so they're typically the two, four, six, or eight layers, and each layer. Um, each pair of layers is wound on at a certain uh, angle, which is where you know the, the, the main strength of the pipeline comes from. And we're able to, to design the pipe uh, based on whatever the requirement is, based on how we lay these fibers. Once we've laid the fibers, uh, we are we are also laying the pulling tapes. These are longitudinal tapes, also of the same material as the high strength fibers that allow us to pull the long distances into a pipeline and add the axle strength of the pipeline. So these tapes are laid on there and there could be, you know, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, there could be multiple of these these fibers depending on the nature of the pipeline we're pulling into and depending on uh, how far we're pulling into the pipeline. And then uh, the fiber optic cables that we've been discussing are laid at the same time as the, the pulling tapes. And all this is, is held in place with with toes, which with fibers that just hold hold everything in place. This is a non-bonded, it's a dry composite. There's no matrix here. Though. Because remember I mentioned that we have to see form the pipe in some cases. Um, we, we prefer not to do that. So it, there's no bonding in the pipe. Um, and then we apply uh, outer wraps, so very robust uh, outer wraps which protect the pipe, and both during the pooling process, but and also uh, for the life uh, life cycle of the pipeline. So it's a very robust system. There's a lot of engineering gone into it. And it's been tested over over several years to to various specifications, and. Uh, and in the ground for multiple years to, to prove the integrity of the pipeline system. Well, we're coming up. I know I have a few more questions, and so, uh, uh, but we are coming up on the uh, end of the hour, so I'm afraid we'll, we'll cut things off in respect to uh, folks' time. Uh, but uh, there is contact information, and also, so for people who want to follow up, they can follow up with you uh, directly. Uh, also, Quick question, a quick answer to the question we frequently get. This presentation should be available on our, our website and on our YouTube channel in about 
a day in about 24 hours. Sometimes Joey's able to get it a little bit faster than that, but it will be available for folks who want to go back through it again. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, also, just a, a notice, a reminder that we will be having our first webinar of the new year uh, on January 17th. Uh, uh, Fotech Solutions will be having one on uh, some seismic applications associated with uh, fiber optic uh, sensing. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, Robin, uh, Christopher, Stewart, uh, thank you for what has been an extremely um, informative presentation and uh, happy holidays to uh, all. And that concludes our webinar. <laughs>